Thanks so much for coming to my talk. Um, I'm going to be talking about your map designs and pushing them beyond the default map. Oh, and I need the clicker. Cool. So I am a designer experience and engagement lead at Mapbox. And it is my mission to get more designers making maps, um, involved in the process of applications and experiences for mapping. And in this talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about why custom maps matter, why you want to customize your maps, um, give some examples of some custom maps by some of our customers, break down vector maps a little bit, and just talk about how they're so customizable and, and why. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the Mapbox provided data and core styles that we have and my process for designing a map style. So that's going to look at the elements that you can change and the design principles that you should adhere to as you design. Cool. So as Eric mentioned in the keynote, Mapbox unlocks the traditional GIS, geospatial information systems, black box, and democratizes map making for developers and designers. So our APIs, SDKs, Mapbox Studio, they've really changed the game and allowed a new breed of developer designer to come in to map making. So this opens up fresh, new ways of thinking about mapping as well. Mapbox allows products and brands to build elegant, considered mapping experiences for their end users. So your app is ex essentially an extension of your brand. And you really want to get your brand and your app right. So um, actually, designers are really good at this. Uh, product designers, UI, UX designers, fussing over the little small details, thinking about how a map will feel when the user is on their bike and it's a bright, shiny day and they're trying to use the map, or considering how desktop maps might need to be more readable for people who are colorblind, um, trying to analyze insights from their big data. So each of these experiences um, should be unique and they should cater to your users. So since there are so many unique experiences and use cases that we have for maps, my question is, why should all maps look exactly the same? So obviously, data consistency is important. You know, you want to have consistent data across um, all applications. But the detail and de the design, the context, that's very important. And the information should not confuse or distract with information overload in your app. The experience should remember your preferences, but not in a creepy way, just kind of, you know, remember. Um, and overall, it should be simple, easy, straightforward, and um, we should curate the data that we provide on our applications to the specific use cases that we have and attach the visual and experiential brand elements to these applications. So let's take a look at some of our, design, some of our um, examples from other clients. So Lonely Planet, um, they have a very photographic feel. It's all about the destination. Um, it's very important that they have kind of like a storybook narrative happening. Um, and if you can tell, like the UI itself is pretty subtle, um, pretty mild, and the destination itself gets to shine. So if we look at their map style here in the center and on the right, um, it's matching the simplicity of the UI. So the terrain itself is highlighted for destination, and it also promotes exploration um, when necessary. So if someone's thinking about camping or hiking, um, the terrain is going to be very important. So that's something that draws the people in to interact with the map. So Ookla is um, another client that we have, and um, they are a leader in testing network and internet performance and diagnostics. So their brand is fast, it's simple, and it's reliable. And it's all about the data and the information. Um, An easy way to compare this and evaluate this data. So the map style they use is reductive. Um, it's very light. It really lets the data shine through. It only really provides context. It's not intrusive at all. Um, and performance also was very big driving force for Ookla as well. And so their reductive style um, helped with the speed and performance of their maps in general because they're leveraging, you know, all of this network data. And so they want it to move fast, you know, because it's speed test. Vice News. So 
This is an edgy, bold, but authoritative kind of brand. They have a very simplified color palette, you know, a couple colors. Um, and their new segments uh, use maps um, as a visual break and also to provide context. Um, and they have limited time in addition to their limited palette. So what they do is they have uh, super simple boundaries that they have in their style, a splash of color, again, just to show context. And this client is pretty interesting because their final output is video. And so they actually use um, Mapbox Studio to create their maps. And then this um, plugin for After Effects called GeoLayers. And that helps them um, separate all their map layers and be able to animate it. So their process is pretty cool. So Woov is another client of ours. Um, Woov is essentially for festival goers. And um, they like to focus have their users be able to focus on the fun activities, you know, hanging out with their friends, finding them when they're at the, view, at the venue for the festival. And so all these different festivals have this different look and aesthetic as well, and they want to mimic the theme when they're making the applications for this. And this is real-time location data so they can, again, find their friends and find the different venues. So. What they're doing with Studio is really breaking the mold of the flat 2D graphics, and they're creating real-world-like video game kind of experiences. So they have more 3D elements or 2.5D um, in their styles. They have um, kind of a fantasy world feeling. Uh, the treatment is applied to every different um, festival map and without it becoming dull and repetitive. So. Another thing that they do that's really awesome is they have a very curated data set of their own. They actually create their own data set because, you know, at a festival, um, a lot of the stages and elements are being built up, but, you know, they're only there for like three to five days. And so they have to go in and create the data, and so then they have more um, space to create the kind of structures that they are able to then design on top of. So I really love their use case. Vector maps. So this is the more technical part of my talk. And if you can't tell, I'm talking more about design than I'm talking about the technology um, of maps. But so this is really good. You know, when designers and developers are working together, this is the kind of stuff that developers like to hear, you know, the um, way that basically vector maps are all code. Um, so what you need to know is that vector maps are not pre-baked. They're not flat. They're dynamic. They're changeable in real time. And they can be redrawn and altered in code. Um, and there's three essential parts to vector maps. So the first part is the vector tiles. So this is the backbone, the framework for all that is possible in styling. And data has to be there first for it to be able to style. So these are all the points, lines, and polygons that make up the planet. So you see you know, cities there in red or green. And then in red, we have countries, um, administrative boundaries as well some of the polygons showing the texture or the different land uses in the area. So all this data has to be there. And this is data that Mapbox provides and also data that you can um, mix together with your custom data and provide um, uh, performant vector tiles for that. So the rendered map. So yeah, as you can tell, it's the same thing. So it's the x-ray view, essentially, of this rendered drawn map. So this happens in your browser on your device in real time. And the data and information is specified by the GL style spec. So there's tons of JSON code that is behind this um, that is telling you know, how um, the browser or your device how to draw the map, what colors to use, um, all of those different elements, and also how to treat things as you start to zoom in and pan around the map. So Studio does this for you. You don't have to worry about writing the code. This code is automatically written in the back, and you're able to take that, give it to the developer, or work on it yourself, and leverage GLJS or the SDK to make changes on the fly with your data and with your map style. Okay. So customization. Um, so customization is kind of like the secret sauce for Mapbox being able to customize and make things exactly the way you want. This includes data, but also you know, the design. So we have some elements that are provided. And um, this is the, the, our vector tiles, the Mapbox streets vector tiles. But we provide you with data, and then we also provide you with some map styles. So then you can customize those to your um, brand. 
So what we're looking at is, um, this is probably like zoom level three or four, um, but the way zoom levels work is, you know, zoom level zero, you're looking at the whole globe, and then as you zoom in all the way down to 22, you're on street level. So you start to see how this data is revealed as you start to get closer, um, where the road network should show up, where the POI should show up. A lot of that is curated on our cartography team so that it's more performant and you have it when you need it. So these are some of our core styles that we have. Um, to the left, we have outdoors, and then there's map box streets. Um, outdoors, as it sounds, is kind of for more outdoors type things. There's um, a lot more um, specificity in the roads that are for hiking or biking, the different paths and trails, um, also campsites, um, bathroom locations as well. Uh, and then for map box streets, that's our general purpose map style. Um, these are all pretty general purpose, but a little bit more targeted. So map box streets is pretty much for everything. Um, highway shields and transit icons are really good on this. And it's available um, for navigation, but we also have a navigation map. And then next we have light and we have dark. And these are for data visualization. So they're pretty simple, um, good way to start as well, and customize your map style. The ones that are missing from here now are basic and um, navigation day and night. And basic comes now with um, our Mapbox Studio, and it's actually been redesigned so it matches with the expressions. So it's really cool. You should definitely check out basic. So these are the custom maps, and I'm very excited about this because also with our um, re-release of Studio, we have now our custom map designs that are available in Studio. So you go into Studio, and you can just click on one of these, and you're able to um, open it up and check it out. Um, have, have some of you guys come to Dana's talk about Mapbox Studio, maybe? Yeah, a few of you? So her map is right here, the Odyssey map. So a lot of us, you know, when we have a little free time, we'll do a map style, um, and we'll talk about, you know, what features we um, highlighted or our process, and we'll send that out or put it on a blog post, send it out in a newsletter, that type of thing. Okay, so the map design system. Um, oh, one more thing I wanted to say about this one here is that these are more thematic. We talked about general purpose maps, so a lot of these um, you know, have a specific style or aesthetic that they're going for. Um, even though they're usable um, for you know, different types of uh, use cases you might have, they might not have highway shields or there might be some things that are kind of not there. So you want to make sure that they have all of the elements that you want, and then those are also things that you can add. But usually with thematic maps, they're going for a look, and that's the most important part of it. So keep that in mind. Um, and I'm going to walk through my map design kind of system and the process that I go through. And I'm going to be talking more about, it's kind of a thematic map, but it's kind of general purpose as well. It's a little bit of a mix. Um, but I'm going to be talking about that. And um, you can apply these principles and elements to um, your map style if it's basic or if it's um, kind of more general purpose or if it's also thematic. So this is um, the inspiration I had for this map style. Um, I recently took my first trip to L.A., never been to L.A., um, went to L.A. back in February. And I'm that girl that's on the plane, like sitting in the window seat with my camera out taking pictures because I like doing that. I like looking at, you know, the terrain. So, um, you know, there was a lot of different things that I was able to see when I was flying over Southern California than I would normally see when I'm coming to Seattle or going to San Francisco. Um, so I was really inspired by all of this texture um, and all of these elements, and I wanted to recreate it. So I'm using heavy terrain data in general for this, but I'm also using very subtle colors to mimic the earth, you know, texture and earth tones. So here, um, I'm now I'm pulling in uh, three additional data sets in general. Um, one of them is Mapbox Terrain RGB, um, our DIM layer. So that's our data, um, our digital elevation model layer. So that's giving me a little bit more of the highlights and um, the shadows in the terrain. So I'm able to create this kind of visual texture. And if you look at this, this is the data view of what we just looked at. So this is that um, terrain layer. So I'm able to pull out some of those elements. And there are different classifications for these. So, you know, it might be uh, shadows that are like, you know, 98 
versus shadows that are 67, and I can decide by filtering that data how dark I want to make that shadow. Um, I also used bathymetry. So I've grabbed some bathymetry data from Natural Earth. And bathymetry is essential the measurement of the depth of water. Um, so, you know, oceans, rivers, that type of thing. Um, like typography for land, only it's for water. And you can kind of see this outline that I have here. Uh, and the bathymetry is also very, very subtle in this style. But you're able to be able to utilize that as well. And here's that data, too. So there are all these different additional layers that you can color and, you know, make opacity. And so the way that they overlap looks nice as well. So you can play around with that. And then hill shades, more hill shades. And you can see the bathymetry. I also use graticules, which I, don't, which I didn't really talk about. But they're the latitude and longitude lines that we see here. Very subtle again. And more terrain over in Ethiopia. And I'm also using the Mapbox satellite layer. So for this map, um, having like an actual uh, view of you know the the Earth once you zoom in, um, really seemed like it fit for this. So um, as you kind of zoom into the city, you can faintly see uh, the satellite layer. But when you get all the way down, the satellite layer is pretty much um, the prominent layer that you see for data. So. How do you build your own system, and how do you kind of use these processes to um, dive in and do your work? So I like to start with you know, a design theme. You'll probably start with your brand or your product. But you know, before you dive into studio, really considering what you want to do aesthetically and what you want to pull out in your map. Um, so this is a taxonomy chart. And this is looking, this is something that we use on the cartography team. And I actually have a link to a blog post that Nat Slaughter wrote um, about this process. And this is, this process takes time. I didn't just like throw this stuff up there. Like this took a long time. And also it was a lot of back and forth. So it was an iterative process. Um, I used some of these elements in the map style, and then they kind of didn't work, and so I changed it. Um, it's, you know, back and forth. And we don't have an automated process for this yet, but um, definitely it would be awesome to be able to connect this um, Illustrator document with a studio document that we have and look at your decisions and see how your map style is changing over time. But as you can see, it's looking at the um, considerations for all of the different label types um, at different zoom levels, and then also all the iconography and the color palette, too, and the hill shades. So the design elements we're going to talk about are color, typography, iconography, and texture. So this is the color that I use for LA Terrain. And like I said, the color is very earthy, um, muted. Um, these are all different hues, but I'm using the same saturation level, so the dominance of the color itself is similar. Um, and that's something that I usually do you know, with the styles, is just pull down the saturation or knock up the, um, the different levels of lightness or darkness and make sure that those match across the different hues. And you don't necessarily want to use more than, I mean, 12 different colors. Like, you know, it depends on your project. But I usually try to stay between 7 and 12. And then the typography. So like I said, these are the labels, looking at um, making sure that there's hierarchy here. And this probably was the biggest back and forth part, um, looking at it on the map, obviously, and then making that change here to reflect it. And you know, there are some times I didn't want to make the change, but I did. Um, but yeah, it's just a good way to document your process and see um, what your typefaces are looking like. Um, and then looking at the iconography. And this is really important because this is what gives your users context. So if they're in an area and they're used to seeing a Starbucks on the corner or they're used to seeing a Bed Bath & Beyond or whatever, uh, you want to have some of those POI symbols. Um, also with transit and rail and highway shields, those icons are really important as well. And as you can tell, I took down the color and the saturation for these as well to mimic the brand and the, for the terrain. So this is uh, about texture. So it's really interesting because I love using texture, but I didn't use actual like pattern texture for this one. Um, but I did use some interesting color blending uh, with this style. 
So I had all these brown earth tones. They had some tints of orange in them. And so I used blue as a complementary color to actually um, do all of the shadows for the um, terrain and the hill shading. So in different areas, it looks slightly different. Um, and I think that it kind of creates a really nice texture when you look at these colors blended together. So design principles. So um, this is basically how you're going to add polish to your style. Um, this is what you're going to do to kind of adhere to all of these elements um, and make sure that you understand the, um, the viewer is able to understand that importance of these things. Um, and being able to kind of create this system, um, as we talked about before, with the design elements, you want to use these principles to kind of pull it all together and make sure that it's cohesive. Um, so we're going to be looking at contrast, hierarchy, density, and legibility. So this is, um, you know, a fast view of the styling that I was doing <laughs> in studio. Um, but, you know, as I was saying before, deciding upon these hierarchies and making sure that you understand um, how these things are playing with each other. Um, there's a lot of filtering the data, so I'm going back and forth with x-ray mode and making sure that I'm um, considering all of the different layers and levels of the hierarchy that are important. Um, so thinking about the city itself and how that's going to be labeled, but then also looking at the neighborhood, um, the labels of green spaces, and making decisions about should that data be styled a little bit differently, then should I make a layer for that or should I make um, a style for that? Also, this looks into contrast. So this map, as you can tell, is very low contrast just because of the colors. And it was really a challenge to make it look good kind of everywhere. Um, because, you know, when you're doing a map style, you can't just look at it over LA. You also have to look at it over um, non-city states and um, more uh, rural areas as well. And you have to be able to read your map in these different places. Um, so this was a really big challenge, um, and I played around a lot with uh, the color and, um, you know, the styling of the typeface. Um, <laughs> no, that, that one didn't work. Um, but, yeah, it's just, it's just really interesting to kind of um, see the process of kind of going back and forth and seeing how it looks um, and deciding upon that hierarchy and that contrast. Uh, one thing that I did that helped a lot was this was just creating halos, but that was also difficult because, um, you know, the terrain looked different in different places. So it's just a fun challenge, and you can kind of move around to different areas to see um, those, how those things are panning out for you. Okay, so the next thing about this that's important to think about is density. And so density actually helped me out a lot. So as you kind of zoom in, zoom out, density is essentially deciding how much saturation of something you want to see. So maybe you don't want to see all the coffee shops at a certain place, and so you want to kind of take those elements out. Or maybe you want to put some sort of a um, hierarchy in neighborhoods um, and pull some of that data in. So deciding what you see at what zoom level is uh, really important when you're working on kind of bringing your map together. And then the last thing is just legibility. You want to make sure that in a quick read, um, a quick scan, people can recognize the icons, it makes sense, um, smaller ones. Um, people can really comprehend the map. That's uh, really crucial. So I have some awesome resources, and you guys will be able to use these slides. But you know, talking about map design, um, there's the um, vector map in-depth data guide. That's super awesome and helpful because it shows you all the different classifications for the layers and the data and information, the types and the ways that you can filter that data. And then the style spec, you can take a look at that. It's really cool. Um, and see like what types of um, different ways that you can tell the browser or tell the window how to style. Um, and then the vector tile specification, which I know we talked about in the last session. And then Natural Earth is a great source open source um, resource for uh, data sets. So I got the bathymetry from there, and um, I got the graticules from there, I think, and I also got uh, the other data. Yeah, I think it was actually those, just those two. 
Um, and so then map design. So I talked a little bit about Cali Terrain in a blog post. There's also a few other map styles there. And the building a map taxonomy chart also is a good read. Uh, and those two, um, they're the map icon editor and the Maki icon editor. Those are like lifesavers. You can essentially bring all of the icons in and change the colors um, in the interface itself and then download all of the icons. So it's like 20, 128 SVGs that you just you know, use the UI to change the color for. So it saves a lot of time. Um, and then some best practices uh, articles as well and, and blog posts to check out. So thank you guys so much for your time. Um, that's my email address. I use Twitter a lot. So I definitely um, look forward to hearing from you and seeing how your map designs are looking. <laughs>